Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this video I want you to learn Photoshop in just a few minutes. We're gonna do a really cool project. We're gonna do this image and I loved it so much that I even printed it to put on my MacBook Pro. It's one of my favorite images. It's gonna teach you Photoshop really fast in a very fun way. So let's get started. My name is Serge Ramini. I am a French photographer from the amazing, the incredible city of Paris, France, living in the US. So first thing first, make sure you download this zip file, which is right under this video called Paris Eiffel Tower Sunrise.zip. Once you download this, I'm gonna double click on it. I'm on a Mac, so you just have to double click on the windows I'm not sure how to do it but you probably know and in this you're gonna hang it a DNG file which is the main raw file shot with my 27 r5 and then you're gonna get a Sun and then you're gonna get a sunrise okay and you're gonna learn so much in just a few minutes the last touches are the best so make sure you stay until the end so I'm gonna right click on the Paris FL tower DNG which is the basic raw file and I'm gonna open it with Photoshop 2024 so you want to make sure you have, let me show you, Photoshop 2024, which is Photoshop version 25.0. This is the Creative Cloud updater. Make sure you have done the updates and you open this one. So here we are. And because it's got a raw file, it's going to open Camaro 16.0. And we're going to do a bit of work on Camaro first before we go to actually Photoshop. So what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to open the shadows to see what's going on. I'm gonna bring down the highlights. So I kind of like that sky, but I do, you know, the sun was riding there and I was like, yeah, the sky was like so boring. So boring. So I'm gonna do my black point. And for this, mesdames et messieurs, I'm gonna hold on the option key on my keyboard and I'm gonna go left. And what you see here in pure black is, like in green and yellow is pure darkness. I always like my roll files to go from pure darkness to light. Then, I want to warm up this photo a lot. So I'm going to go to temperature and I'm going to add a bit of yellow and I add a bit of magenta. So you can, you can do these settings, but that's a general idea. I'm going to add some vibrance to the old photo to make it more colorful, but I'm going to go to color mixer and I'm going to go to saturation and I'm going to boost the red, the orange and the yellow. And the reason I'm doing that is just to make the warm colors. I really want to give it like a morning feeling. Some sunrise in Paris are amazing. Unfortunately, it was not that sunrise. Then I want to make the photo straight. So I'm going to go to geometry and I'm going to click on auto here, auto and boom, it's completely straight. So I love that. I think I want to go back and maybe add a bit more contrast The photo. Like, yeah, contrast, like plus 40 contrast, maybe boost the white here a little bit. And I kind of like the photo, but it's still boring. I want to make it fantastic, amazing, incredible. So I'm going to open it. Mesdames et messieurs, it's open. So now first we're going to do is a change the sky. So I'm going to show you a little trick so you can add this guy that I'm giving you in your Photoshop. So for this, you're going to go on the basic layer. So if your Photoshop doesn't look like this, don't worry about this one, but you should, all you did is the layers, the layers. So you can go to windows, layers, if it doesn't look like this, you can go to Windows, Workspace, go to Photography, and make sure you have the layers. Okay, you want to have the layers like this, or you can go to Windows, Workspace, and go to Essential, and make sure you have the layers, okay? One little trick also to make your layers very big is you can go here, three dots. You can go to Panel option and choose the big one the big thumbnail size, so you have got big, I love big thumbnails. I love big thumbnails, I love big thumbnails. Anyway, allons-y. So now, I'm gonna go to edit, and I'm gonna go to sky replacement. And by default, it's gonna use the right sky because it's the one, I, I practiced this before doing this video, so it's gonna use the one that we're gonna be using, except it's on the wrong side. So how do you add the sky that I just gave you in the zip file? Thank you so much for asking, it is amazing. So you click here, one click here, and then you see, I've got a whole bunch of groups. You can just basically click here on plus. Okay. And you can go to the desktop where hopefully this is where you've put the zip file and you look for that sunrise JPEG file and you click on open. And what that's going to do is that it's going to add it to your Photoshop and it's going to add it forever. This is a sky that I shot in medium format that I'm giving you for free forever. And now it's here. Now, the problem is that the sun was rising here, so it's a good sky, but the sun, we need to flip it because the sun is not in the right position. So I'm gonna flip it and boom. And now we've got the sky there 
and it's it, it matches to where it is. So, okay, it's starting to be great. So I'm gonna click OK. And now I'm kind of kind of happy with that. But there's a couple of things I want you to learn in Photoshop. First, we need to get rid of all this nonsense here. There's like a trash can. I want to keep the girl there. Why not? It gives like scale how big the place is. Or maybe even take it out. We'll see. What I'm going to do is because we're using Photoshop generative fill, I think we can do something really cool. So first of all, let's because I really like this guy, I'm going to commit. I'm going to select both layers. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click merge layer. So now we only have one layer because I really like what we did in the sky. Next is I'm just going to take the lasso tool here and I'm just going to go and hold down the shift key and then make a selection around that trash can here. Okay. And look at all this trash. This is so not good. This trash here. Th and because I'm holding down the shift key, I'm able to do all this section in one time. I actually want to get rid of this thing here. So I'm going to make a selection with that. Okay, and if you did a selection that's a little too big, you see, I by mistake, I sort of slipped, you can hold on the option key and make a little circle here to take that out. So you only have the selection where you want it. Yeah, I want to get rid of all that. So I'm just going to click on and this is new. That's why you need to have this version of Photoshop generate fill generate. And what that's going to do is that it's going to send this to a thousand coder in San Francisco and they're going to erase everything and send you the photo back. No, it's going to use AI and boom, it does 99% of the time it works really great. Look at that. Boom. And you got three different options. Option two. I think option one is the best. Yeah, option one is the best. It's a little bit blurry there. It's a little bit blurry, which is really annoying. So one thing I do sometimes when that happens is I create a new layer and I'm like, I want to copy this clean thing over here. So I'm going to take the stem tool. It's just a, also a way for you to use the stem tool. So take the stem tool and then a, a master trick in Photoshop is you can press a control and option key together and then you left click. If you left click and hold on the, the, the mouse, it's going to make any tool in Photoshop big or small. I want a big stem tool and then I'm going to copy that. You see the generative field did like the heavy lifting, but now I want to make it better. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to copy that, align it here and go down. And I'm just copying. Well, we're getting the stairs, but I think that's fine. Nobody's ever going to notice. But yeah, it's kind of annoying that we're getting the stairs. And let's see here. Maybe I'm just going to copy that over the stairs. And I'm, I'm aligning it first and then I'm brushing to copy that. And uh, it's pretty good. It did a pretty good job. That was the only part that I didn't like. There is some blurry here. So I'm thinking, but that's okay because actually the AI thought that the tree were very far. So they made it a bit blurry, which is fine. Not a big deal. It still looks great. It's still a great image that I would completely print. But I want to do a couple of things to it. Like I don't like the fact that the Eiffel Tower is so close to the top here. So how can we change that? Well, first, I'm going to commit to what I just did here. So I'm going to select everything, shift select, right click and merge layer on this one. And then I'm going to take the crop tool here and I'm going to go here and I'm going to choose generative expand. That's a new option, which is crazy. Check this out. I'm going to expand this a little bit and press enter. And the AI is going to try to imagine what the pixel should have been at the top of the photo. And it's going to recreate the clouds, the top of the building and everything. And boom, check this out. Now we got we got a lot of space above the Eiffel Tower. Let me move this around. Look at this beautiful. And again, you got three choice. Ooh, I love it. I think choice number one is better. It closes the building. I kind of like gives me more sky. I love that. Okay, that's amazing. So now we don't have that because that's just a you know, one of the rule of photography is you gotta have to go around your photo and make sure you don't have anything that's kind of like in and out. So that's that's kind of good. I'm gonna commit to that. So I'm gonna select and uh, right click and merge layer again. Normally, you know, in a perfect world, you don't merge la the layer to keep it non-destructive. In this case, I, this is what I want and, and I'm fine with it. You don't have to do that, but it's a big file. So, and these are like big files. So you better have a beefy computer if you want to keep all the layers. Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to add some sun there and I want to turn on the lamps here. So I'm going to go here back to the finder and I'm going to drag and drop the sun from the finder to my thing. I'm going to put it over the sun and voila, it's amazing. It is incredible, isn't it? No. 
we're gonna do something which is called blending modes. Blending modes is basically different ways to blend pixel and it, you see it does a lot of weird things, but if you go to screen, check this out. Look at this, before and after, that little spark is perfectly there and it really adds something. Now I do wanna crop this photo at 16 by nine, so I'm gonna take the crop tool again and let's go to 16 by nine. Basically, I don't want, there's a lot of stuff at the bottom I don't necessarily want. Maybe it's a bit much sky, something like that, yeah. Because that's how he did it originally. 16 by nine, boom. And now I want to turn on the lamps and I want to do like a final retouching. So one thing I like to do at this point, and that's just my way of doing this, is I'm going to use camera raw to do the final retouching. So I'm going to create a layer that, well, I'm just going to blend this to layer. So I'm going to commit this merge layer again. And then I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to right click and make it into a smart object. The reason why I'm putting it in a smart object, what does that mean? It just means that it takes that layer and makes it in a way that I can, whatever I'm going to do from now on, I can change my mind. So I can go to filter and go to the camera row filter and I'm going to turn on the lamps. This is something I could have done at the beginning, but I wanted to do it once the sky was there because I wanted to do some final dodge and burn, meaning making it darker and brighter. And I want to do everything in camera row. So I'm going to go here and use the local adjustment tool. And I'm going to take what we call a radial gradient. Check this out. And I'm going to click and make a little radial gradient over that lamp here. And I'm going to boost the exposure and I'm going to boost the yellow. Okay. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate this mask and I'm going to drag and drop it on the other lamp. Okay. And now the lamps are on. Isn't that crazy? Look at this. Before and after the lamps are on. Before and after. Okay, perfect. Now, the next thing I want to do is to blend everything together. I'm going to go here and create a new mask. And this time I'm going to do a linear gradient. So I'm going to click and drag. And I want to lower a little bit the sky here. And I, don't, I actually don't mind lowering a little bit the, the building in this case, just so that the attention is more toward the sun here and everything. And then I want to also lower the bottom here. Looks like I made a mistake, so I'm going to click, click plus linear gradient and I'm going to make another gradient for the bottom. Looks like it didn't crop the photo how you wanted for some reason. I must have messed up something, but that's fine. So, okay, I made the bottom darker. I think I want to add, I want to open the shadow even more. I want to bring down the highlights a bit more. I want to, I want to add more contrast to the photo. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe open the shadow a bit more. Look at that. And it's called a double development. And now we're developing the photo with the sky, with everything. Oh, what happened to my, what happened to my uh, second lamp? Yeah, I turned it off by mistake. Okay, cool. And uh, I think I want to add just a tad more contrast. Yeah, a tad more contrast, maybe lower a little bit the colors. It's a little too much. And honestly, at this point, uh, I can lower the vibrance. At this point, it's just a matter of like really appreciating the photo and taking the time. But I'm challenging you, download this raw files, do it. And what you can do is you can follow me at photo search on Instagram and you can post it and then you tag me. If you do that and leave me a comment, tell me you do that, I will look for it and I'm going to pick a winner and I'm going to post it and share the way you retouch it to 100,000 people. So make sure you follow me on Instagram and make sure you tell me in the comments that you've done it so I can trace your post on Instagram and I will use it and post it in my story to 100,000 people. Okay, that's basically it, so I'm okay with that. Make sure you also like this video, it really helps me. This is the final result, a beautiful sunrise in Paris. I hope you get the same result there. Make sure you also give me a subscribe because I have an awesome video coming out very soon uh, about landscape photography, which uh, took me months to, you don't wanna miss it. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you follow me on Instagram and tell me in the comments if you've done this at home. I wanna know if this helped you to learn Photoshop really fast. Thank you very much.